Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel, and if you're new, then hello! So this is episode 2 of my Emerald Tree Skink series, where all the videos that will be coming out on my channel is going to be focusing on Emerald Tree Skinks. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you guys how I did my DIY background for my tree skinks. So quick refresher and story time before we start. I had a colony of about 5 Emerald Tree Skinks when I first started out, and and I've had them for about two years now. They were living peacefully for about a year or so, but um, when breeding season started up again, um, there was a bit of tension and some fighting. Sorry, little bean here is just uh, crawling all over me. I ended up finding out that I had three males and two females. I had to rehome one of my males to a friend that I could keep in close contact with, and the other male I had to separate and put into a spare PVC enclosure that I had. That male would be Bean, who is the male tree skink that I have right here with me today. He was a lonely bachelor for a little bit, and in the glass enclosure I had a trio of two females to one male. I didn't want to interrupt them and in their breeding, so I figured around the fall time I would uh, separate one of the females so that I would have a pair in one enclosure and a pair in another enclosure. But then my male and my female skink started to gang up on and start fighting with the one female that I had in there. And she was getting bullied pretty bad, so I put her in with Bean to see if they would get along instead. Before I knew it, they were climbing all on top of each other, they were basking together, and it was just the cutest thing ever. It's like they became the bestest of friends. So when that was finally settled, I now was able to focus on and start remodeling and upgrading the PVC so that it would be a suitable habitat for them. Backgrounds are great for emerald tree skinks because it gives them more things within the habitat to climb on and also can help block out glass so that there's not like this invisible barrier for them to just sort of jump into. In my big vivarium, I have all three sides of the enclosure covered except for the front for viewing purposes, but uh, for the PVC that I'm going to be redoing, I'm just going to be doing the back wall. If you want to see how to set up a bioactive vivarium for emerald tree skinks, then uh, check out my other video that I will make pop up on the screen somewhere, uh, which is a step-by-step -step guide to doing a emerald tree skink vivarium. It is a bit old and uh, it's one of the few videos that I first did when I started out YouTube, but it gives you the basics and goes more into detail of how to set up a bioactive live planted vivarium for emerald tree skinks. If you like this video, then be sure to give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment down below, and hit that subscribe button if you want to see updates on my pets and videos like this in the future. So this is how the tree skink habitat looked like before. I showed it to you guys in my last video, and it's not the greatest setup since I had to throw it together so suddenly after having to separate my tree skinks, but we're going to change that. First thing I had to do was remove the tree skinks from the PVC, and I have them in this temporary PVC setup. This isn't a suitable size enclosure for a pair, but for about a week or two while I work on this project, this will be okay. Then I had to dismantle and clean out the decor I had in here so I can work with just this plain old PVC. I already picked out some cork grounds that I liked and I'm just placing them on the background to see how I want the layout to be like and I think I'm pretty happy with this. I also have some old plastic flower pots I'm going to put in there so I can add some plants in the background when it's done. Now comes the fun and messy part. We're going to be using the Great Stuff spray foam. I wanted to use black but they were out so I picked up this grey one instead. Most people use this spray foam for their DIY backgrounds and I get mine from Home Depot. Now I'm just going to get to work and start spray foaming. You'll want a good thick layer of spray foam and might even have to go over it a few times but I just want to make sure there's no areas that I miss and I just go around the cork grounds and flower pots. I'll also try to get underneath the wood a little bit as well to make sure it actually is going to stick to the background. Just remember that the spray foam does expand but honestly just have fun with it. 
You may want to use gloves with this because it can be kind of sticky. I just made sure I was being careful and to not get it on my hands. I'll give this a day or two to dry. You might want to do longer, but this is how it looks when it's finally set up and all dry. Now time for the not so exciting part, which is carving out the background. This helps give it a more naturalistic look and you can shape some of the areas to your liking. Some people use knives, razor blades. I've seen some people even use sandpaper, but I'm just using a kitchen knife and my hands. I don't carve too much of the background because once it's covered with silicone and dirt, it looks really nice regardless and I don't mind the bumpy look a little bit. Next step is to get messy. You'll want gloves for this step for sure because it will be messy and very sticky. Here I'm using a black silicone brand I got from Home Depot. You can't use just any silicone as it could be harmful to your reptiles and amphibians. So you'll want something that says aquarium safe silicone or something like this that says 100% silicone. Pure silicone is pretty safe for aquarium use and even has a low odor. I've got a silicone gun here and I've already cut the tip of the tube off, but I'm just going to use a skewer stick to get everything flowing. I've smelt normal silicones before and it almost burns your eyes and nose and it's rather unpleasant, but I was able to work with this without any irritation. You're going to want to do this in sections, so I'm just starting with this section here and just globbing it all on. Then with your one hand, you're going to spread it and smear it all over the background. Now time to add the dirt. Here I'm just using some loose eco-earth. You can use other soil type substrates as well, but I like using the eco-earth because it's very soft and fine, and it's usually dry enough to use straight from the bag. I'm just gonna take handfuls of the soil and lightly press it onto the wet silicone background, and it should stick. When I was doing my other tree skink background, the soil I was using wasn't dry enough and it didn't stick to the background very well, so it kind of ended up being a fail. It is what it is, but I'm making sure this background turns out the way I want it to. <laughs> so make sure that whatever it is you're using has dried out to ensure optimal sticking to the background. So once again, just glob the silicone onto small sections of the background, spread it and smear it around, then press the soil into the wet silicone and repeat until the whole background has been covered. I finally installed the lighting for this PVC, which is a 30 inch Reptisun UVB light and a small LED light. So now we can see a little bit better in here. And this is what the finished background looks like. I'm so happy with how this turned out and it looks so natural and has a lot of fun elements for the tree skinks to climb on and explore, but I'm going to give this a few days to dry. I did have to go back in and fill in some spots that were missed, but once that was done, I misted the background twice a day for about a week to kind of rinse it and clean it off. This time also allows the enclosure to air out any chemically smells from all the products we just used. And once that smell goes away, it is safe to start setting up your habitat and put your animals in it. Here I am setting up the vivarium again. As I mentioned before, I do have an in-depth video that goes into how I set up a live planted bioactive vivarium for my emerald tree skinks. So I won't be going into details on that in this video but I'm using a mix of live plants and fake plants and over time I hope to slowly switch out more of the fake plants for real ones. Now it's time for the big reveal. So this is the enclosure all set up with the finished background. 
Now my emerald tree skinks have this beautiful vivarium to explore and live in. I still will be adding more decor items over time like sticks, plants, and other fun decor items, but this is looking a lot better than it did before and I am really happy with how it's turned out. Thank you guys all so much for watching this video and I hope that it was a little bit helpful for some of those that are looking into getting emerald tree skinks and uh, just starting out with the habitat. More emerald tree skink videos will be coming out so I am really looking forward to that. I don't know which video I'm gonna have out next but I do have certain topics that I want to go over like breeding, sexing, feeding, enrichment, and more. I've also made a emerald tree skink playlist on my channel where I've added some of my past emerald tree skink videos on there and where I'll be adding future videos like this one to the playlist as well. Don't forget to check out my other social media which you can find in all my links in the description box of this video and hopefully me and little bean will see you guys all next time. Stay weird everyone.